Welcome to the Saleya Podcast. Today I have a special guest with me, Ivan, who is yes, a sir. music producer, a sound engineer, and he is from Russia and recently came over to the United States. So I am really excited to talk to you today. Thank you for coming. Thank you. It's actually been like almost four years. It's, Has it been four years already? Yes, bro. It's like four years. I'm already here. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, tell, tell them how we met because we met kind of in a funny way. Yeah. So um, uh, I met on my like, I don't know, maybe six years ago or something in the okay. Berlin. Yeah. Uh, it was like uh, first European uh, past the Ox tour. Yeah. And uh, I randomly saw in a, like a post, like uh, one of the producers, I didn't know who, who he, he was. Yeah, yeah. And I like one, one of the producers are making a class in there. Mm -hmm. And I decided, oh, I have to go. He made Berlin and London. And Berlin was like two hours flight for me. So I decided, sure. yeah, let's do it. Let, let's do it. So I went there. I met a bunch of super talented producers and yeah. they're like from Europe. I met Q Beats. Um, I don't, I don't even remember like most of the producers, but they're like huge big names producers. Right. And I start making relationship with, with them, start making beats. I, I knew who Elmai was. And um, <clears throat> then um, I uh, start. I think I, I went to LA past dogs okay. and I built more relationships yeah. with him. And uh, then I came back to Russia and the COVID starts and uh, he starts streaming and mm -hmm. all the stuff that's basically, I sent him a, a sample pack and he made uh, a couple beats with my samples and you just record on, on our <laughs> yeah, songs. Kind of, and, kind of and, yeah. Random. Yeah. This is how I actually met you. And like yeah. four years ago, I, I was actually texting you, let's meet, let's meet, but something was wrong. Yeah, something like, came up, I don't remember, yeah. but... It was, even we lived here, like, close by. Yeah, we, like, you've lived here for a while. Yeah, it's like almost two years. Yeah, two one years. One and a half, and one and a half. For those who don't know, like, this is our first day actually meeting in person. Yeah, first reaction. Yeah, first, you get the real, <laughs> the real deal. But, I mean, I thought it was kind of crazy just... So I've met from Illmind Stream so far, mm -hmm. I've met you and then... I don't know if you remember Cap Kid. Uh, mm. He was also in the stream. He's come here. He's visited here like twice so far. And I've met a few people just so far from the stream in person, which is so funny because like my wife always makes fun of me. She's like, you have all these internet friends and like you just meet them randomly. She's always like kind of sketched about it. Mm. And then um, and then we meet and then she's like, oh, they're actually really cool. Like, <laughs> like it's they're normal, you know, they're normal people. I'm like, yeah, I know. I've been talking to them for like four mm. years. Like, <laughs> so it was kind of funny. But anyways, okay, so let's go back. So you're a producer, obviously. Yes. Let's go back to the to the beginning, like in Russia. What's your instrument? Do you play an instrument? No, I don't play any instruments. Wow, okay. I can play like David Guetta. Yeah, David Guetta, okay. <laughs> um, he actually followed my page recently. I really? was like, yeah, wow. Whoa. I was like, what the fuck? That's huge. I just w woke up, saw my, saw the uh, like notifications in my Instagram and like, whoa. You're like David Guetta. <laughs> So um, since I got my uh, personal PC, so I decided to like find myself in any create creative spaces. So I start buying like CDs and start drawing. I start like Photoshop pictures, mm -hmm. videos. I still actually do videos like on the side, um, but I always knew that music is my thing. Mm -hmm. Since I got that first CD with my DAW, DAW like mm -hmm. digital workstation, so <clears throat> and uh, after it probably was something like mm, second grade or third grade of, of school, and uh, since that I started making music, making music for a while. Then um, one of my friends told me like, "Yo." there is a DJ thing, like I know that DJ who's playing in the high schools, in the middle schools. And uh, um, I start looking, what's the DJ? Like he, they are actually not doing music, but still like you kind of around. And so for, I, I've been doing a DJing since 2006. Oh, wow. And uh, okay. yeah, I was busy with that. And then like, DJing start my main thing, but yeah. I still did the, like music production. But I wasn't, um, I was not confident in my. I don't have a confidence yeah. of, of of making music. Sure. 
So uh, I've been doing it DJ like really, really busy. I, I can't, I, I got like um, three, four gigs a, a day or night. Wow. So I can play like 12 hours or something. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So starts in the pool party yeah. somewhere, then like six, seven, like pre party, then the main like disco, like all the stuff, and after party till 6 a.m. Not yeah. like here, like two, two. Yeah. A. yeah, yeah. But and then I I I've, I met a couple of friends that um, actually was into production as well. A couple of friends okay. DJ and uh, they show me some more stuff and um, I start making my DJ thing uh, more. Um, I mean production thing more and more. Um, then I haven't seen like f- like feedback when you make music. Mm-hmm. Or when you work, when where you doing something, you most of, most likely you have like immediately feedback. Right. Music and creative things we don't even know what we're yeah. doing. Yeah. <laughs> and no feedback, no immediate. You have to wait. We don't know if it's good or anything. Yeah. yeah. The best producers who can see when the paints, what's the called the the the, the dry. I don't know what's the actual word. Like for when that. the paint dries. Yes, paint dries. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. If you can see when the paint dries, you're going to be one of the best producers yes. because you have to be patient. Yes. So I try to 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 drop to stop doing the production stuff and I focused on music and uh, just side works. Yeah. Um, I started my own company with doing social media stuff. Okay. And we did some business stuff for. Like local businesses, yeah. like um, barber shops, restaurants, okay, and all that stuff. Yeah, a bunch of different, even nails, like really? dentistry, well, okay. doctors, <laughs> anything. Yeah. So I decided on making money first, and um, once I visited like Justin Bieber's concert, mm-hmm. I was like, no, I want to be there. Yeah. Not like uh, be as a uh, fan. Yeah. So I want to perform there. Yeah. So uh, I want to be on the stage, and it's something turned in my mind. So I, I bought another laptop just for making music, and I start making music again. And step by step, I built more confidence, uh, doing music by myself. Sure. And uh, it gets me um, in another production level. So since that, I st- like start doing my own stuff. Yeah, and taking um, production stuff more serious, and um, I have a, actually a great story. I I, I haven't seen I ha- I haven't sent you the video for promo our track, but uh-huh. the basically the hook of the the video will be this is how I went from um, minus moving from like no. Uh, I uh, how I went, mm, how I went moving United States with minus forty k dollars and pregnant wife during the COVID. Wow! So this is the hook. So um, I met my wife in the uh, airport of San Francisco. Really? Yeah. Is your wife American? No, she's Russian. Oh, she's Russian. Yeah, too. she's okay. from Saint P. So okay. we flew at the same flight at the same uh, airplane for fifteen, sixteen hours together. Really. So then it was like St. Petersburg, Russia, Finland, Helsinki, Helsinki, San Francisco. And we met in San Francisco yeah, and yeah. we flew in Los Angeles. And so you met her in the air, in airplane? airport, yeah. And then you married her. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. I, <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. And uh, she told me, like, oh, my, my, one of my friends, she are not able to come with me in Las yeah. Vegas, but I have tickets, but I have right. everything to just, let's go. Yeah. We, so we went to, uh, we spent one day in LA, next day, we went to Hollywood Hills, uh, okay. do it, um, do some regular tourist stuff. Sure. Uh, next, the same day we flew Las Vegas, next day we spent an amazing day in Las Vegas. Yeah. Hmm. Then I went back uh, and visit Chris Brown concert in okay. Anaheim. Yeah. So on and on is like when the trips ends, we came back to Russia. 
and uh, bef- it was r- right before the COVID starts that we went to uh, my, uh, Miami, mm-hmm. like uh, New York, Miami, uh, just for visiting. To, we we start dating immediately when okay. we went back. We start d- dating together. Yeah. So we decided to have a like uh, short trip, and um, uh, during that visit, like. And then the second visit in the United States, I met Elmind already in person. I did oh. a personal class for him. Wow. I teach him how to, like, um, I do some classes um, for uh, how to make content in on your iPhone. So I did okay. a content class for him. Yeah. So, so, uh, and it was the when the COVID starts. Okay. So we went back to, hmm, to Russia. Uh-huh. And um, we decided to marry. I wow. already told you, like I, I, I feel that you are, my, you are my person. I want to marry. It sure, was, sure. it was something like that. Yeah. And um, we planned the baby, the all that like regular mm-hmm. family yeah, shit, yeah, you yeah. know. <laughs> and we decided to deliver our baby. Uh, she, she became the pregnant, like in in the it's the the COVID starts in February, or something like that. And we decided to de- deliver our, our baby um, in the United States. Mm-hmm. It was something like October. Okay. So it's like almost a year later, right? Yeah. It was the peak of the COVID, I, I think. Um, decided to deliver a baby here. So we came here for medical services and all the stuff. After a few months, like three, four months, we decided, let's just chase my dream. Yeah. <laughs> and she supported me and like we decided to stay here. Wow, uh, we delivered baby. I uh, we have like minus forty k thousand dollars, so I have to pay for a doctor. Yeah, I have to buy any car, cheap car. You yeah. know, in LA is like impossible to live. You, I have yeah. to pay uh, first deposit, monthly deposit, mm-hmm. or in, even two deposits. I have to pay. Uh, we stayed in Airbnb for two months. Wow. Um, I have to pay the 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 biggest check was. To pay immigration lawyer. Okay. Yeah. So I spent like uh, nine thousand, like wow. just for th- your sh- services. Really. And like five k for like fees yeah. and all that stuff. So um, this is how I start. Like. Wow! Now you're here. <laughs> now I'm here. Yeah, I started. Uh, sh- my immigration lawyer. I faced a lot of difficulties when I moved here. Sure. So so first. First lawyer, she messed up our case. Oh. So I wasted my money like 15, 20K. Because of her, I wasted like 20K, something, really? maybe that even much? more. Yeah. Wow. So I have to hire another lawyer. Yeah. I have to do a lot, a lot of paperwork. She, we were planning to have a, she was already pregnant with the second baby. We planned yeah. to have a, a son. Um, it's like, was the due date. Uh, and, um, Hmm. It was a due date. And we we was in rush. I I need to figure out how to make money because like right. I need to spend like another like ten k immediately because like the fees and all this stuff. If I wouldn't do it, uh, the time that I spent living here it was illegal. So and they okay. will kick me. Um, so we decided to have another lawyer, and we need to have a bunch of papers. Yeah. In like two months or in in months, she's pregnant. Is like months to deliver the baby. Right, it's fucking hardest time all of my life. I'm sure. And my Prius start crashing. The the battery start crashing. Like yeah. and like it's it's already almost dying. Yeah. The Prius start. My 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 car was first car was dying. Everything at the same time. <laughs> oh man. Oh my god! Um, so <laughs> crazy. we figured out uh, somehow, and um, it was uh, delivery time. Uh, we we submitted case. Mm-hmm. Next day she delivered Mark. Really? Yes. Wow. And we had uh, another year to fight with the bureaucracy. After like a few months, we we, we applied for the uh, fast K review, uh-huh. case review. So yeah. we like. Spent two, two just two months and we got approved. So my okay. case was was appro- approved. Yeah, but we need to spend a lot of time to uh, applying for uh, changing 
to switching one paper from old case to new pa- case. It's like bullshit, you know, mm-hmm. bureaucracy. Yeah. And um, it took it took it took us like a year uh, a year sharp and one day. So we uh, celebrating my first. Uh, um, we we were celebrating uh, first uh, year of my son. Mm-hmm. At next day, we received a green card. Oh wow! <laughs> all all the you know like Crazy. the signs you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, since that, I start doing my like um, social media stuff. I like I I did it for a while when I moved here. I already knew some some uh, basic stuff, not the basic stuff, mm-hmm. but some some uh, simple things. And I start interviewing with the major engineers, producers, sure. and uh, it starts like taking taking over like and. Um, now I working in one of the best studios in Los Angeles, like Playback LA, um, with a bunch of gear, with, with yeah. the most talented people. I surround myself with Grammy Award winning uh, engineers, producers, sure. and uh, I, I work with them. I like um, I ask them some questions. I uh, make some content. I'm growing my page. I still figure it out, but. Aren't we all though? Yeah, now, now <laughs> we're, we're all here, trying yeah. to figure it out. <laughs> yes. So this is kind of my short story. Take us back to the time when you were living in Russia. Like, what's it like living in Russia compared to the United States? For those who don't know, like me, because I don't know, you know. What kind of <clears throat> what kind of stuff you're interested in? Like, like regular like life just, or just music regular, scene? Just regular life. Like, just I mean, is it different? It's chill. It's more safe. Yeah. Fresh air, yeah. Uh, like <laughs> LA, um, LA air. Ch- uh, kids can go to the anywhere without the parents. Yeah, they can stay home without wow. like until it's not like here. If you if you sure. will, uh, if you um, how to say like if you let your be- uh, kid stay uh, by him his own, yeah. is you they probably call somebody and yeah. they like you know yeah. In Russia, it's more chill. Mm, for example, my parents can send me to the local store, and oh, we need to buy this, this, and that, the bread, and like some yeah. regular stuff. You can you just, just go on your own. Yeah, you have to go. No yeah. choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, they're yeah, like, yeah. you need to go. You need to go. Yeah, <laughs> and um, <clears throat> um, it's kind of you know it, it's chill. What part of Russia are you from? I'm from the south of Russia. What part specifically? Um, it's like if you have ever have ever uh, heard about the Sochi, uh, uh-huh. the Olympic Games. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's like six hours away from there. Okay. Um, it's called. It's closer to Dagestan, Chechnya, where no, no, Habib Nurmagomedov lives, the MMA fighter. Okay. It's yeah, like yeah. Uh, five hours drive in there. <clears throat> wow. So it's uh. As you can understand uh, better, I always tell my friends, uh, it's like uh, Russian Louisiana. Really? Yeah, because huh. because of like... Like Midwest. <laughs> no, it's like, it's actually on the left side of Russia, okay. in the south, but the way the, the reason why I tell like this, because uh, my city is like the capital of crawfish from Russia. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Where we boil crawf- crawfish, crawfish and, yeah, and yeah. a huge thing. So you know crawfish. how to cook? Crawfish yeah, yeah. really good. Yeah, not like here. I never tried here, but I want to try yeah. uh, American like recipes. Yeah, but uh, most likely, as I saw some videos, like add too much stuff and oh, okay. too much, yeah, way yeah, too yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it might be good actually. Um, so I'm in, living in Russia. It's kind of chill. It's safe. Uh, f- the food quality is m- much better. Um, but speaking about the music scene, um, the reason why I moved here, um, because our music scene, uh, music scene is more likely for artists, not for producers. Oh, really? Kind of, yeah. Huh. And um, I have a bunch of multi platinum producers. Yeah. In Russia, who made huge records. Yeah. And they still were living with their parents, and really? they're making like a thousand bucks, really selling lease or something like this. Yeah. So, and I saw it a bunch of times. You can still like 
do make some nice money if you will move to bigger cities and all this stuff. Sure. But you will not live like here, like most of the huge producers are living. Yeah. In in order to maintain that uh, life, yeah, quality life, level life in Russia, you have to make and sell all your rights like monthly. Yes. Yeah. 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 There you can count. We do. We still have do some major producers who have royalties and splits. Sure. But you can count like from your like two fingers, like I don't know. Really. Two hands over your fingers. You come over here and you are now working at the studio. Mm-hmm. So what? What do you think is the way that producers can really break into the industry at this point? Like, because a lot of people, I don't know about you, but I've noticed a lot of people since since the pandemic mm-hmm. have been producing. Like a lot of, even like I have friends that have never picked up a, you know, they never worked in Ableton before. And then all of a sudden I see Ableton mm-hmm. on their computer and then I'm like, well, what's this? And he's like, oh, I started producing in, in the pandemic. So like, there's a lot of people doing it. So like, what do you think is a way that we can stand out? Like as producers, like how do we break into the industry and make sure that we are different than other producers? First thing, you have to... Open your door from your house and go. <laughs> yeah. Meet the, you have to, yeah. like, in order to, opportunities comes from the connections. Right. So you have to go uh, out and uh, visit all this, those networking networking events. This is the first thing that you, you must do. Yeah. Every creative person must do in here. If you want to, ch- like, achieve something, Right. you, you must... Uh, go and uh, visit those um, networking events. So this is the first thing. Second things, second thing is uh, we are no longer producers. Mm. We are uh, content creators who produce. Yeah, I agree. And uh, yeah, and the artists as well. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that you have to just like make beats for, for video. It means like you have to just be taking serious your cre- content creation. Right. And you have to be consistent in order to grow. But there is another question: how you can stand out um, making content? Because like those tutorials mm-hmm. and singing, all this stuff is kind of boring. Right. So you have to find your own niche and mm-hmm. the way, the delivery, how you uh, how you make your content. So sure, this is two things that you have to do to, okay. to achieve something at least. Yeah. So. Going back to that number mm-hmm. one, when you because uh, yeah I agree I think a lot of people a lot of producers are naturally introverts mm-hmm. and so they they stay behind their computer and they don't really go out and talk to people, so like where should they go like how do you how do you meet people like in the industry like should you go to studios should you go to like concerts should you go to you know if you have a friend that works at a studio maybe hit them up like what if someone is a producer and they want to like start making those connections like what's the first way to do that. Um. <clears throat> use internet, Google. Okay. Google.com. But yeah, uh, <laughs> seriously, um, you have to follow your favorite people, favorite producers, engineers. And uh, most likely, uh, most of them are posting something like events like Ilmine, do yeah. Pass the Oxes. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever been in Pass I've never been to Pass the Ox. I got to go. Yeah, you must go. But he's stop doing this for, yeah he's just making online stuff but still you can go online as well sure and uh, just follow follow on instagram or social media people who you like and um like most of them posting like events yeah and you just uh, go to those events okay oh yeah and meet people at yeah that. it's not it's not that hard have you been to nam oh big time bro yeah i'm like it's my summer camp Okay, yeah. Yeah, you I can go on my Instagram and I made like a bunch of videos from there. Oh, so you were there, you were just there? Yeah, last, yeah, last yeah. Year. Okay. Oh, great, I've yeah. been like three times. Really? Yeah. Okay. So and I, I see my myself growing since, since the first one. Oh, yeah, for sure. First first one was like, oh, I'm, oh, I'm like in heaven. <laughs> Second was like, um, oh, cool. I met this and that and person, blah, blah, blah. It's cool. And last one was... Uh, now they know me. Yeah. Now I have like a free pass and all this yeah. stuff. Like, yo, this guy knows me. That guy knows me. Yo, I'm shaking hands, just making relationships. Right. Know, interviews, content. Yeah. 
So there's Nam the, is there's a perfect example. Nam is like you must even like if you're living in, in the United States mm-hmm. or like overseas, you must go there. Oh yeah, you must go there big time. Yeah, get a ticket, come out to Nam. Yeah, I mean it's. I remember the first time I went. So my uh, I have a friend who works uh, at the company that does a lot of distribution for mm-hmm. Spectrasonics, and he. Uh, got me a pass the first time. This is kind of, I was a little bit younger. So I was just getting into the industry. And I remember going and walking in that main room and just seeing like the endless amounts of just gear. And I was just like in heaven. I was just like, what in the world is this? And then you go upstairs and you got all the pianos mm-hmm. and you got people playing pianos. It was just, I mean, it's an experience to go to. And then of course you go down, down to like the engineering spot and you got like people like Ali and, you know, you have uh, like, what is it, Young Guru, and you know you have a all of these of legends, right? Like that are just coming in and just talking about all of this stuff that they've been doing, and all of the. You can ask them questions. Mm-hmm. Like I remember, uh, you probably were there, and we just probably didn't know it. Uh-huh. But I remember watching uh, Jason Joshua and Dave Pensado mm-hmm. talking back and forth, and Boy Wanda, and, like all three of them were just talking and like explaining how they mix and how they find artists mm-hmm. and how they turned it into a career, which is like priceless, like. Like, where else are you going to get that? You know, you can't just Mm -hmm. call them up or hit them up on DMs. Like, it doesn't work, you know? But if you go to NAMM, you can. can. Yeah, you probably can. (laughs) Probably because you've been to NAMM so many times. What the flex, right? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) But, like, the average person probably can't. So I think, like, if they're looking to get into it, like, that's a super good Mm -hmm. good way. Get a pass to NAMM. Go meet as many people as you possibly can. I think a lot of producers can, if you just get out of your comfort zone and you get get into the rooms with people... Like you'll get opportunities that you just are not going to get else elsewhere, mm-hmm. I guess. Right. I mean, wouldn't you agree? Like that's, that's what I've noticed, at least for myself. Like most of my opportunities have come from just talking to people and getting to be just being friends with people, getting to know yeah. people, you know? So, okay. So, so I like that. Number one and number two are really good. So what are you doing now? Like to forward your career? Like what are the next steps that you're doing to scale what you've already created so far? Like you've already, you're successfully into this position at a studio you're producing your engineering what are you doing now to to even scale your i guess your business forward from this point i'm trying to grow my channel and social media stuff um okay. so i'm more focused right now um on growing my instagram page and tiktok and all this stuff okay so this is my main focus and um and what kind of content are you doing I'm doing that? interviews. Okay. I'm doing like, I'm asking, uh, what's your secret sauce? Like, vocal oh, chain okay. of Lil Uzi, vocal yeah. chain of Young Tuck, yeah. vocal chain of uh, Chris Brown. Like uh-huh. f- the first person who is like working with them, I'm, I'm asking their engineer. Okay. Like the, the f- like first, um, how to say, first hand. First hand experience. First hand. Experience, yeah, ex- experience. I'm asking yeah. those questions that people would be interested to to ask them, but right. they, I, I'm just speaking for them, basically, kind of, right? Yeah. Uh, also, I do my own stuff, like um, if we are making music for like if, for our like um, songs and sure. like stuff, I just make um, like promo stuff, like stories, right? Behind the scenes, um, I do some tutorials, but it's not the big thing on my channel. But um, I do most most. Um, most of the time, I make um, interviews. Okay. Yes. Wow, that's really cool. So you're you're in Ableton, right? Obviously. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. For those who don't know, Ableton is a software. Yeah. I don't know. There's some people that do watch. They have no idea what we're talking about. So Ableton is like a it's a software that we make music mm-hmm. in. So good choice, by the way, because I'm in Ableton <laughs> as well. <laughs> but um, when you're in the studio, are you on Pro Tools? Um, or do you somehow get to use Ableton? Yes. When you are working in the studio, you have to know Pro Tools. Yeah. At least like a basic level. Sure. But since I'm surrounded with the best engineers in the world, yeah. uh, I learn so much. And uh, I'm not a I'm not a pro Pro Tools user, but mm-hmm. still I I I I know some some basic stuff, and I can can run the session and all the signal flow, not sure. basic engineering stuff that you must learn because like. Right. Uh, if you're working at the studio, you you must be uh, you you must know 
Pro Tools and you must know some basic engineering thing because if the client comes, you need to fix the signal, right? check the signal and set up the mic, set up the vibe, the studio, like all this stuff. So, so yes. when, you're, when you're working in the studio, are you the one that's engineering everything or are you mainly producing? Or is it a combo? Um, I, don't, I don't engineer uh, sessions for other people, okay. but if I have to do... Um, I'm focused on making my own records from A to okay, like, yeah. So I want to be a producer. Sure, I'm not an engineer. I'm not a content okay. creator. I'm a producer. Right. What what is that? What's a producer means? Music producer means uh -huh. you have to know how to make music mm -hmm. somehow. You have to know how to record. You have to know how to make content. You mm -hmm. have to know how to promote people. Marketing, yeah. Um, you should know a, a little bit about songwriting, right? Um, maybe if you can sing or beatbox some basic stuff to express yourself. So basically, as mo as more skills you have, as better you you are better. producer. Yeah, yeah. So th the reason why I start learning engineering more deeply, uh, because. Um, it gives you more opportunities. Yes. You, you open the doors. Yep. And second one, you are becoming better producer because your beats and the, your music uh, becomes much better. Sure. So, so what's the question? Was well, I don't really remember. <laughs> um, what was the question? I'm not sure. I, I oh yeah, it was what your uh, like when you're in the studio. Like, what are you working on? Personally, like, what uh, personally, are you engineering? Okay, yeah. are you? I'm working on my record, so I, okay. I made a beat. Sure, I introduced, uh, I invited artist or um, songwriter, uh -huh. and uh, we're just making a record. Okay, wow, this is like my main focus because if you send beats or samples to someone, it's kind of cool. Yeah, it's it can work with um, introvert people, sure. like super. In I'm introvert, I'm big time introvert. Are you I'm, really? I'm scary to go out and pick. To, to talk to people sure. like like um, I'm, I'm I'm scary and nervous doing the podcast because I'm not a, <laughs> I'm not a talking guy especially yeah. when a horrible accent and like no your accent's I'm, fine I'm, I, sh I, I'm shy you know you speak very good English uh, so thank you I, I wish people will understand my 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 English so <laughs> so basically like um, if you're doing something like sending beats or uh, like sending uh, samples you're relying on somebody. Mm -hmm. But once you are started recording, once you're responsible f uh, for the process from almost A to Z, yeah, uh, you now rely on yourself. Or there are still some something like stars, stars and align. suns line, yeah. yeah, stars, something like this. Still, uh, you depends on something, but you skip the the most of the. Uh, like it's kind of shortcut. Shortcut, yeah. Short kind of shortcut. Because you're in the studio. It's not with a shortcut, artists. but like shortcut, like because you're skipping those uh, steps that uh, you don't have to wait for and only rely on other people. Right. So um, this is kind of the, the the reason why I want to be a producer. Sure. Producer, not a just beat maker. Yes. Well, a lot of a lot of people they they just make the beats and they send them mm -hmm. out, which is cool. But yeah, I think. I think a lot more opportunities open up if you can like be the person that has the artist come into the studio. Mm -hmm. You can write the music with them, you produce with them, you engineer them. Like if you can do everything with the tools that you have, mm -hmm. I think it sets you apart. I've noticed that. Like I've noticed people have come to me just because like I've offered that service. It's like come to the studio and record. And but like you don't need to hire mm -hmm. an engineer because I'll be your engineer. You don't need to hire a producer. I'll help you produce everything. I'll help you do everything. And I've gotten a lot of opportunities just from that alone. So I think you're onto something there. Like mm -hmm. that's like a big thing. A lot of producers, I don't think, like, how many people do you know that just per, like make beats, which is fine, but like that's all they do, you know? And they don't know how to necessarily interact with an artist in a studio. Like that, that's huge too. I don't know if you've noticed that. I'm sure you have because you've engineered mm -hmm. and you've produced for artists and stuff. But even just the way that you communicate with an artist is huge, and like making them feel accepted in the in the area and the vibe of the whole studio and how you communicate, like. I remember when I first started engineering a few artists and we they'd come in and they would do like vocal takes that mm -hmm. maybe I didn't think were very good. And I'm like, like you, there's like an option. You could be like, man, that's horrible. Do it better, you know, but you're going to offend the artist and they're never going to want to work with you again. And you're, you don't want to be a mean dude, you know? So I remember like just thinking about how can you, like how could I make it the best experience for the artist? And I remember I read Dave Pensado. He has a book on engineering. I'm sure you've seen it, but 
he talks about how to communicate with an artist in a session, which I didn't really think about much until I read that. And he was just talking about how everything is to make the artist as comfortable as possible. And I started to implement that into my sessions. And I noticed like we were able to get better recordings than we ever got before. Just, just from me, the way that I communicate mm-hmm. with the artist, you know, which I'm sure you're familiar well, yeah. with, you know, big time. and it makes a big difference. Um, so do you want to talk plugins? Oh, like plugins for? Yeah. Do you want to, like, we can talk, like we can get, I have some questions about plugins if you want to okay. go into that. So, okay. So what's your favorite saturation, like saturator plugin? Uh, the first thing that comes to my mind is uh, like uh, Decapitator. Oh, yeah. So some t- sound toys. Yep. Mm, second thing that comes to my mind is um, Saturn, but but I don't know why. I'm not using it okay. very fr- frequently. I need to fig- still figure out how to like use it better, but still, it's a good, good plugin. Um, and third thing is not kind of saturation plugin yeah. in direct, directly. But it's kind of coloring EQ, still saturation, right? Uh-huh. It's like Ruby from Acoustica. Okay, yeah. It's like uh, it's emulation of DW Fern. Okay, yeah. 85. Mm-hmm. It's like most of the top engineers using this uh, unit for their sure. records, and uh, Chris Brown, Tizio using this. Okay, Baines using this one. I don't know, like Namey, almost all, almost the top ten pro They're engineers all using, all, all using this, and as like the plugin emulation is incredible. You can boost. Who, who makes it? Acoustica. Acoustica. Okay. Acoustica. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, another plugin from almost the same emulation of the same company, but it's like a fre- very fresh plugin. Mm-hmm. Um, VLC, Hazel Rick Industry Industries. Okay. Hmm. It's the same company. It's mm-hmm. just uh, two guys in Sacramento or somewhere. Uh, they're just making handmade every unit. Oh, really? And uh, they sh- like super like Bieber's records on on this yeah. uh, stuff. Is it a physical unit? Physical unit. Oh, but they okay. just made an emulation huh. plugin. Oh, wow. Mixwave uh, VLC, uh, Hazelrick Industries. Okay. This new new plugin, and they sh- they just make a recreation that sounds like. 80% something clo- sure. very close to the original one. We have those in our studio. Wow. The, you got, you're going to have to send me that. that I want to see that one. Yeah, it's cool. It's yeah. like on discount uh, right now. It's like 99. Okay, cool. But I might have more discounts later after their sale. Right. So what's your favorite uh, EQ plugin then? And I'm sure because obviously EQ, that's such a big question because there's so mm-hmm. many different EQs for different types of mm-hmm. work that you're doing, but just to, let's say you just had to pick one EQ and that was like the one EQ you could only pick, like what would it be? And why? I hate to say it, but um, Pro Q3. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but I'm big fan of the stock Ableton plugin. Uh, Ableton. Really? Yeah. The, the EQ8? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but the only thing I realized, um, it was on my mastering chain first. Uh-huh. I just cut the uh, below the 30. Yeah. And... Um, then I just made an AB with the Pro Q3. I, I'm I'm not recommending using this stock plugin on master or something like sure. major thing. It's like a huge difference. You can really? even hear and if if you're even not prepared, you can hear and hear the difference between the EQ the EQ8 and then the uh, Pro th- Pro Q3. Yes, actually, yeah. yeah. But I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of uh, Ableton. Stock. Yeah, the, there's so many good plugins in Ableton. Have you? Um, Most of them. Have you dove into Roar yet? Mm-mm. The Roar plugin. So it's in Ableton 12, the new edition that came mm. out. I love it. It's a it's a distortion saturation. There's lots of different like mm. uh, modes. Like you got like soft clipping and uh, hard clipping and diode and like the, you can change a bunch of different settings basically to make the, the most insane sounds. Love that plugin. It's like my new favorite. And it's a stock Ableton plugin. A lot of people hate on plugins that are stock, but. Like who was it? Was it uh, Odessa? 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 Uh-huh. Didn't they make? They made like all of their stuff with just stock plugins. Skrillex. From, yeah, Skrillex too. He does a lot of. He's in Ableton. So like, yeah. I mean, I just think a lot of people they hate on stock plugins, but there's some really good stock. No, plugins. I actually never heard like people hating on the Ableton stock plugins. Oh really? I don't know. Yeah. Wow. I mean, they're good. Yeah. The the, the, the Ableton really is great. Yeah. Yeah. I love. Uh, what's your well? Okay. Well, then, what's your favorite Ableton stock plugin? Mm. 
And obviously, you, I think util, I think utility. Yeah, utility. Yeah, <laughs> me too. I use it on the mono mode. Okay. The, the EQ. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's got the mono button. It has the volume yeah. control. It's got the you can what invert phase, right? Yeah. Uh, I use it on. In fact, on you know simpler. How, simpler, yeah, simpler, simpler or simpler. sampler, simpler, both. both, yeah. I use um I use utility on all of my audio tracks. So mm-hmm. Automatically, it'll just pop up. I just have, I save the you know you know you can save as default audio track. I just do that with mm-hmm. like a EQ eight and a utility on every single one, and then a tuner just so I know like if I'm gonna plug in a guitar, I can tune it correctly mm-hmm. or whatever. But yeah, that and then simpler and sampler. Uh, which one do you like better? Do you have a preference? Obviously, they're different. Sampler. Sampler, sampler, because you yeah. can like set the root note and all yeah. stuff. Yeah, 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 same. Sampler is really good. Simpler, I, I like simpler for if, one shots. For one shots, if you're just doing something simple, hence the name. But um, okay, so cool. So EQ saturation, we got that. What about for if you had to pick a plugin for bass, what would you pick? Oh, I I gonna put you on the on the game. Okay. I got a chance to use. Uh, there was a beta tester of the, that new plugin. Uh-huh. It's uh, called Sub Factory. Okay. I forgot the actual plugin name, but it's called the Sub Factory. Yeah. This is the best plugin for 808s and the really? bass. Yeah. You it, can actually do it on Serum and yeah. or stock Ableton stuff, but sure. this is the best plugin for like bass stuff. Is it is it uh, like sounds or is it like a, an effect? It's like a sync plugin. Okay. Synth Got plugin it. for bass. Synth, synth bass plugin. Wow. Yeah. It's really, really good. Do you know when plugin. it comes out? It should be pretty soon. Who makes it? Uh, I, I don't remember. Okay. Wow. It's like called? Sub Factory. Sub Factory. All right. Yeah. Well, it's a really to, great one. I'll have to remember that You one. have to buy. Okay. I tried a bunch of, I've been looking for the best 808 plugin because yeah. like I'm really OCD uh-huh. big, uh, about tuning stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. Tuning eight, especially eight to eight. Yeah. yeah, I have like I like when everything, even like snare and like kicks, uh-huh. are most of the samples are in tune. Yeah. So uh, I was looking for the best eight to eight plugin because I like them tuned. So and I tried sub sub something. I forgot the actual one. Another oh sub XL. Is that what it is? Something like this. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a, another like plugin for, but it's kind of, I don't know. It's working weird. Yeah, for me, I tried um, to use some presets on um, Serum. You can find some nice, but you still need some processing stuff. Sure. I tried to uh, use like one shot eight ways. It's not accurate, and some most of the times so you have to tune it or something like this. Yeah. But this one, immediately when I plowed this plugin, just made a basic part on my uh-huh. wall. It was great. This is the one. This wow. is the one. What What about it? Do you think separates it from the other ones? Like what What uh, was your What was like the best thing about it? I guess it just worked perfectly. Did you it? know, when you just uh, upload and it sounds exactly what you expected yeah. to sound. You don't have to change anything. Yeah. Yeah. That's those are the best. When you find something like that, it's like you got to keep that in your mm-hmm. arsenal. Do you, do you find yourself like switching through plugins? Like, like I know for me personally, like when I'm like making music, there'll be like a period of time where I have like a set full of like maybe 20, 10 to 20 plugins that I'm on, like I'm mm-hmm. only using. And then like, I'll forget about a plugin that I have and I'll go back and I'll be like, oh, I have that plugin. That thing is so cool. I'm going to just use that. And then I use that for like six months. Like, do you find yourself doing that ever? Big time. Yeah. Especially <laughs> and now I have most of, well, most of the plugins. I yeah. have like almost everything, um, and uh, but you have to start uh, to make uh, a part of your daily routine or like producing routine. Yeah. Um, trying new plugins every time. Yeah. Especially like for coloring, saturation, compression, and sure. all this stuff. Or once you got the new plugin. Start the, uh, using this. Yeah. Um, another thing uh, I would recommend uh, in Ableton, you can mark them um, like mm-hmm. coloring. Mm-hmm. I was just gonna ask you about that. So I do like I have like my saturation and EQ color color um, color code. I okay. have um, compression. Um, I have effects. So I just like like categorize them. That's a favorite point. bar. Scenes. Yeah, and one of the like um, Ableton stock yeah. that I use use the most. 
Okay. So I just like have five different different colors. Yeah, different colors yeah, that yeah. I just Yeah. I love when they uh incorporated that into Ableton. It like took at least Super for convenient. me. It was so awesome. And then especially now, I don't know if you are you in, are you on Ableton 12 yet? No. Okay. Just alone. I oh. hate I hate uh Oh, you hate upgrading? Yeah. Yeah, but uh once I buy a new laptop, I will You'll definitely upgrade? switch. Yeah, the the really cool thing on Ableton 12 that I love is like the categorization system that they got going on because you can like you can search by company and then search by by like effect. So if mm -hmm. it's like effect or instrument, you can mm. click either one. And then you can go in even further and be like, what kind of effect, which is like super useful. Because mm -hmm. I know for me before, like you have to go in in, in plugins and then find the plugin manually. And mm -hmm. it was like super frustrating to find, especially if you have a lot, it takes forever. But I just do, I don't know, how, do, you, do you do this? Like I, what I'll do is I'll just do command shift or just, uh, what is it, control... On a Mac, it'd be Control F. And you just do Find All, and then you can just type in the plugin name, and then it'll pop up in the in the left hand corner. Do you do that? No, I just um, like how do you find your plugins? Just go to the search. You just go through the search. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Don't use the shortcuts, BMN. Yeah. <laughs> just use your mouse. Just use the mouse. All right. Hey, we all have our ways, right? Yeah. That's crazy. Okay, so then we have so we have bass EQ saturation. What about compression? What's compression. your go-to compression plugin? Um. Compression. Shadow, and Shadow and I'm going to say, what is your go-to compression ratio for vocals? So those two. Mm -hmm. um, Shadow Hills, mastering compressor. Okay, yeah. Uh, Ruby. Uh -huh. Ruby from Acoustica. Yeah. Uh, you know this plugin? I do, yeah. yeah. Um, regular stock plugin, Ableton. Regular, the compressor? Yeah. 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 Um, I forgot. I have a bunch of them. I have a, the, the the folder with the, all those. Um, but I'll I'll uh, tell you. I stop. I stopped using compression. Like really? Uh, not 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 like like fully. Not fully, but I use soft clipping. Oh yeah, of course. Same. <laughs> have you ever tried the orange clip? Orange clip, yeah. Gold clip. Oh yeah. Yeah. So instead of like uh, compressing, I just clipping those. Are you clipping on everything individually? Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. I'll have to try that because I've just been clipping like my master pretty much, and then also yeah, master as well. Also, just like I'll clip the drums, but I, do you mean do you, are you clipping instruments even too? Everything. Everything really. Yeah. Have you ever wow. tried? Uh, have you ever heard about clip to zero uh -uh. strategy? Uh -uh. So basically, if you want to uh, make your mix loud as much as possible, especially if you are making EDM. So just put soft clipper in on almost every track. Yeah. Don't go too hard, but just clip just a little bit and every everywhere. How much know? are you clipping? Would you say like? How? I don't know one dB something. Oh, so it's very little. Just, yeah, but just go to like uh, it should touch almost the zero. Sure. So it's easy for you to like make levels. Okay. Yeah. So just clip to zero almost everything. Don't clip too much because sure. it's otherwise it's going to be squ squashed. Like, you know, it's, right, right, right. It's, sounds weird, but um, instead of compression, I just use soft clipping. Okay, yeah, I don't blame you. Uh, soft clipping has been so cool. It's like orange clip. I when I got that plugin, I was like, man, this. Do you know what's the orange clip? Yeah, it's well, it's modeling FL, right? Yeah, the soft clipper in yeah. FL. Yeah, I mean, I remember at Nam Jason Joshua talking about. He's like. I get mixes from FL and they just sound way louder than other dots yeah. for some reason. And he said, he even said the same with Ableton, but I think now, especially now we have orange clip, like you can pretty much replicate it in any dot. It's one to one. It's like it's the same. It's not the same. Yeah. 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 Which is amazing. So I'm, I've been totally on that since it came out. Just, I mean, it's, it only came out like a month ago, two mm -hmm. months ago, whatever it is, but that, and then do you use uh, the God particle? Oh yeah. I love that plugin. Yeah. So good. And then, I mean, anything that, honestly, I'm a big fan of Cradle Audio. I love, uh, I don't know if you, do you know Lewis Bell? Uh, yes. So his plug in the Spirit, which is really good. I, wanna, I use that on vocals I all wanna, the time. Yeah, I want to try this one. That one's really good. Especially, that one is good if you don't have like the money for like a lot of plugins and you just want one plugin to make your vocals sound like pretty okay. Mm -hmm. Like pretty good. Like, like for example, like when I record on these mics, which I don't do very often, but mm -hmm. sometimes I will, I'll put that plug in. It's on. actually a legendary, legendary mic. It's a legendary mic, yeah. I mean, Michael Jackson, right? I mean, everybody. Young Thug. Young Thug, yeah. I mean, The Weeknd, everybody records yeah. on this mic. Um, but I put that on there and it's, it's just already ready to go. It's just perfect. So yeah, I love those plugins. Um, do you crank it on 200? Of course, Yeah. sometimes. I like to keep it more of like, 
closer to 100. It just depends. Yeah. You know, but you're talking about uh, God particle, right? Yeah, yeah, God yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't like going all the way up to 200 because I think it, for me personally, it's just a little bit too much. Mm-hmm. But I, yeah, I mean, I'll go down to 80 to 100 usually is where I keep it. And then I, I like to, uh, do you use the limiter in there or do you not? Limiter where? In, in the God particle because there's like a limiter on the, on the right side mm, of it. Not really, no. Not just really. for saturation. Just more. for saturation, yeah. And then the EQ is cool how you can like tune it to, to Jason's mm-hmm. uh, I just u- Usually I just use the main You just knob. do the big knob, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It sounds it's, great. It uh, sounds great for you. Do you use, so on your master, what are you using for clipping? Is it orange clip? Yes, I like orange okay. clip. Do you uh, use T-Rex at all? I used to use T-Rex. You did, okay. I used to use T-Rex clip, clipper, but after uh, orange clip, clip came out it replaced it yeah replaced it yeah it's still it's still great clipper but yeah yeah. so when you're clipping your master how much are you clipping uh just like i don't know a couple dbs not that yeah one db not that too much you know yeah i'm this i'm the safe uh, producer i'm a safe mixer (laughs) because like even i do like something compression on mastering or whatever i compress I usually, if they have like dry, wet knob, yeah. I usually do it like 80%. 80% dry? Yeah, okay. 80%. So when you're clipping then, are you no, going... No, like 80% wet. Oh, 80% wet? Yes. Okay. So I leave that like 20% to, to make it safe and like not okay. overcompressed. Sometimes you uh, your ears are like overwhelmed and uh, you, you, like, you, not, you might not hear something. Yeah. Even though you do A, B, you might be tired. So I usually do like 80% sometimes. Sure. So when you're clipping your master... Are you going up to zero or are you leaving headroom? Uh, making beats or making records? Uh, for both. Because I, I know that's different. Uh, for me, not. But uh, some, some people, uh, when you are making beats and uh, you're planning to send those, it shouldn't be too um, way loud because like, well, yeah. there is no room like, for, to record. Right. But... Um, Let's say let's say on a record where you're like you have vocals and you're actually it's like minus eight LFUFF. L- okay. UFS. Oh, so you're 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 going yeah. up. High. Yeah. Nine, eight, ten. Yeah. Wow. So do you? So you don't even use a limiter at all. I use limiter after. Oh, you do after. Yeah, just one dB as well. Oh, one dB. Okay. So so most of your volume though is coming from the clipper. Right. I, I do. I have a uh, so my mastering chain is EQ. So I cut lows like under thirty. Then utility, so I make mono everything mono uh, before 150. Then, really? huh. yeah, well, then okay. I use um sooth, mm-hmm. so I do sooth like 80%. Uh, there is a preset, um, Eurovision or something like that, okay, yeah, um, or like something Grammy, something like this. And I just this is my starting point, I tweak that, and I usually use like on 80%. Then I do isotope imager. I do widening on some uh, mid range frequencies, like because, because like most of the vocals are in the center. Sure. So I make it wider in the center. Okay. So um, then, where did I, you get that from? What that trick? Because I've heard uh, of that from somewhere. I, just, I don't know. I did just, you just make that up? Yeah. Huh. I heard. I heard Jason Joshua does that same thing. Oh, cool. He does it with ozone. As well, so uh, he just widens the mid range. Yeah, mid range. So it, there, my sp- some space. I I, be, I did like a. Um, I, I visited a bunch of huge uh, engineers who are making uh, their classes. So okay. I might. So you picked it up from somewhere. Might be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So then after imager, I do um, compression. I guess. It's like a Shadow Hills compressor. Okay. I yeah. just made a couple dBs compression, mm-hmm. maybe two dBs, not that much, and, and still leave it uh, like uh, 80%. Sure. So it's not over compressed. I just need a little bit of glue on master. And usually when you make too much compression on your mastering, it gives you, it takes your low end. So, yeah. Um, so after the compression, you need to... Um, Compensate that, so I usually use some saturation plugins or coloring. Uh, okay. It it could be a Ruby from Acoustica, or I love Fresh Air. Yeah, I love uh, from Slate. Yeah, from Slate. Yeah, yeah. I add some twenty percent in there. Mm-hmm. Um, then I add some MagiQ. Oh, MagiQ. Yeah. 
It's like my secret sauce. Is it the high end? Yeah. The, uh, fre- the 40K? Uh, a, yeah. Yeah. Like fresh air. Yeah. I mean air, just air. Um, then I use Match EQ. Match EQ, you oh, know, from I, Isotope. I, oh, Match. Oh, yeah, yeah, Match yeah, yeah. EQ. Yeah, yeah. Oh, is it, it Magic or ma- Match? M A D C H. Match. match. I don't. I don't think Isotope. I know that. This is the secret sauce, bro. Is it really? Yes. Is it, I'll tell you how I'm using. Okay. So, I have not, I've not used this. Before. So most of the songs are mixed and mastered. Um, most of the pop songs are yeah. you used to mix and master. We're using the pink noise. Michael oh. Jackson, Britney Spears, hmm. all the Max Martin. Most of the Max Martin yeah. stuff using the pink noise, the wave shape. Really. In the Magic U, there are a bunch of profiles, but I like. Using this as a reference, yeah. So I analyze there. You can the, you can press the analyze button. Sure. It analyzes the whole spectrum of your song, and uh, it tries to match uh, your your uh, EQ specter uh-huh. to the pink noise. Oh, and okay. usually, usually I see the deep between like five six k, and then I this is this is a sign for me. So I go back to my mix. I go directly to like drums yeah. or like melody vocals and I add those 5k here I can for example for drums I do like add some something in there there so I add something sure I go back I reanalyze the waves a uh, wave shape yeah. of the then I see okay I have still have the deep uh, I need to add some 10k so I might go to just on mastering, I just might go to um, Mega Q and I just boost 10K right. or any coloring. Yeah. And uh, now my wave shape is much, almost matching the pink the noise. The pink noise. And now it's like perfect balance. Wow. And then I go, after that I go um, soft clipper and then uh, limiter. Okay. What limiter do you use? L L2. L2? Uh, okay. Pro, pro, yeah, pro. The, the Q. Fab filter. Fab filter, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you 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 got a big master chain then. That's that's kind of but I do like a little by a little, you know. Right. You strike me as the guy that would do a little bit of effect with lots of plugins. I don't know if that's the case. Yeah. Huh? Like but you seem like you would make like when you're putting plugins on things, mm-hmm. it seems like you would only do a little bit of like the effect on a plugin, but then you're having more like a lot of those plug like a lot yes, yes, a lot yes. of plugins. Like I remember, so you know, Forty, uh, Drake's producer. Yeah, I remember watching or not watching. I think it was an interview he did on Sound on Sound when he did Drake's headline, mm-hmm. and he he showed like the compression that he was using, but he used like this this because this is right when I started producing and I remember looking at it and, and I would put like one compressor on but I would do like a lot of compression with mm-hmm. the one compressor and then I remember seeing in that interview he said that he used like five or six or seven different compressors but he's just hitting them barely mm-hmm. and each one is, is just coloring it just a little bit differently and I remember once I started to do that like it like just a little bit of an effect rather than a lot of an effect mm-hmm. and using multiple plugins to do that it just took my production to a different level so you kind of strike me as a guy like that would do that where you have just mm-hmm. you're kind of more conservative with your effects but then like you add them up over time if that makes sense i don't know if i make mm-hmm. any sense use as more effects as you can be a man yeah exactly <laughs> joke yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah more is it, better use as many <laughs> more is better yeah, yeah. <laughs> on an 808 maybe yeah but um well cool is there anything else that you would want to discuss like before we What's wrap your up top three favorite plugins top three fa- okay I, I just thought of this today. I have a new one. Have you heard of Silo by, uh, I think it's Unfiltered Audio? Mm-mm. So it's, it's so I don't know if you know, like, do you know what a silo is, like in English? It's like, it's like one of those big, huge things that they put grain in, uh, or, or like when, like the farmers, you know, the farmers like out in the fields, mm-hmm. they have these big, huge, like metal things that mm-hmm. they put grain inside to mm-hmm. store. But this plugin is based on, at least from my knowledge, it's based on the acoustics of one of those. Mm. It, so it's it's like a reverb, but then there's a lot of different like LFOs and things you can do to, mm. to change like the parameters of the sound. Check this out though; it is it is amazing. It's one. Of, cool. It's like for sure right now my favorite. And then I would say second is probably. Oh, like, we're talking just effect plugins, right? Anything. Anything. Okay, well, I'm just going to do effects because there's that, that's like a whole different other category. 
uh, I love Knock. You know, Knock mm. by Decap. Yeah, yeah. That one's just I know great. Decap, yeah. So that one's super good. Um, and then the last one I would say is that I've been using lately. So I've been using a reverb from um, Liquid Sonics. It's mm. called Seventh. Oh yeah, Heaven. Seventh Heaven. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like a, a emulation of the Bricasti M7, which is like I'm sure you're obviously you're familiar with that, but for those who don't know, you know, it's a reverb that. Yeah, I did the giveaway with them. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I love that reverb for some reason on vocals. It just to me it sounds the best personally. I've used like I would say for me, out of all the effects, I'm obsessed with reverb the most, mm -hmm. and I love the tones of reverb. And there is a trick too, like that I've found in in uh, just the straight Valhalla plugins mm -hmm. that you can do that uh, that I love to do on my vocal. It's just basically where you make the room really small and then you turn the decay way up and it, it, it basically acts like a, a like a delay, mm -hmm. but you're in a room still. Mm -hmm. So it kind of sounds like a reverb and a delay in one. It's really interesting, but those are my top three. What about you? Pro-Q1, Pro-Q3, and Pro-Q4. Pro hey, I'm joking, bro. Pro no, Q4. No. <laughs> Just like that. That's not out yet. <laughs> uh, um, it's my like. Uh, I'm asking people their top three favorite plugins, and most of the time they're telling the Pro Q3. Is it? So I became. Yeah. I made a meme. With oh, Pro, Pro Q1, Q3. Pro Q2, Pro Q3. So yeah. yeah. Um, I would say the first thing that comes to my mind is like a gold clip. Okay. Gold particle, and um, Ruby from Acoustica. Okay. Right now. Isn't um isn't there a plugin uh isn't Greg Wells' plugin El Ray from Acoustica? Have you seen that one? Yeah, I have it. What, you have what's, that what's the question? Like that, that's um Greg Wells, the engineer. Uh -huh. His plugin is from Acoustica, right? The El Ray. Uh -huh. uh, do, you, do you use that one at all or no? I have it um, I just recently It's a vocal plugin though, right? Or it's compression. El Ray is like uh, compression. Yeah, compression. Yeah. So I I had this plugin recently, but yeah, I, I heard tried. it's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. I haven't used it. Yeah, it's more for coloring. Coloring, yeah. Yeah, it's compressor, but it's the people, uh, the why people using this more because it has specific character. Okay. Like saturation and all yeah. stuff. Yeah, I've seen a lot of engineers use that on vocals. Yeah. So I'm like really curious to try it out. I'm always like trying to figure out like vocal chains. I love vocal chains creation. Oh, check my uh, vocal chains. I have like oh, your video. Oh yeah, you do. Yeah, you're yeah. I met about a I met a bunch of like Lil Uzi. I met Chris Brown. I met MGK recently. Um, oh, that's sweet. I'll have to check it out. Bieber's. And that's on your IG or your? Yeah, my IG. Okay. Yeah. I'll have to look. Well, that's crazy. Well, is there anything else? What's your secret sauce? <laughs> my secret sauce. For what? Anything. I know what your secret sauce is. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I know what I want to know <laughs> about your vocal saturation thing that you got going on. You have to tell me about that. Remember that what, in Which COVID one? where you? Would, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that, That's easy. That was so nice. My secret sauce. Okay, let, let me think here. Okay, there's a plugin. Do you ever buy plugins from like Gumroad? Like the you know the website Gumroad. So. I stopped buying. You stopped buying plugins? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's made by, it's like a Max for Live device mm -hmm. that I love. And what it does is, I forget what it's called, but it, it basically, you, I, you set it to a key command and all of a sudden what it'll do is if you click, like for example, I set it to one. If I click one, it'll pop up with a clip, a little like a little box and I can control the volume of any clip. Mm -hmm. I can warp, change the warping of any type of clip. I can do, there's just all the effects that you can do like once you go into an actual clip, you can just do it all right there. And it saves me probably like, it cuts my sessions in almost half mm. as far as the time. That's really good. Also, but as far as like vocals go, let's say, let's say secret sauce for vocals is I use that, the, uh, the Bay 1073 emulation, which is the Neve 1073. Mm -hmm. And I can just tell you after I got that, like everything changed. Like it brings the vocals so far forward in a mix. It's just, it just makes it stand out like way more than mm -hmm. I, cause I was using just, you know, like a regular interface before, which is great. And I think they can work, but the, the uh, saturation that that thing has, like when you just, when you push it just a little mm -hmm. bit, it just, it just sounds like something I've not been able to emulate with plugins. So that is probably, I would say my secret sauce right now is just using the hardware gear. It's just, 
I remember just trying for years, trying to figure it out. Like, and then you use the hardware and you're like, oh, like there is a difference. Yeah. Same, same with like synths. I've been getting into synthesizers lately. Yes. And like, like, so I just got the Prophet 10. Nice. And I, I remember just playing that for the first time and like, just thinking like, I've never heard anything like this on a software. I mean, that's just my opinion. Mm -hmm. Maybe you know otherwise, but just the level of analog warmth that thing had, I was just like, this is, it's it. This thing's amazing. So, um, yeah, what's your secret sauce? What would you say? I always telling, uh, my secret sauce is uh, networking skills. Networking skills. Networking skills. Okay, interesting. Yeah, and the building relationships. Yeah. Yeah, I was talking to my dad about that yesterday because we were having a conversation about like mm-hmm. how to be successful in the industry. And he was just saying, he's like, the only difference between talented people that have success in the industry and ones that don't is the connections and the relationship mm-hmm. skills that they have. And I think it's super true. I mean, it's your secret sauce. So, I mean, I think it's, I think it's a, big, a big deal when you can connect to people. Like just like someone who does this really well is ill mind i feel like like he's just friends with everybody you know like yeah without expecting necessarily anything from them just being friends and then just providing value i think is huge like you just want to be like the guy that everyone's like oh yeah i like that guy he's cool he's he, he's relaxed he's chill he he's great at what he does he's never annoying you know a lot of people i think too kind of come off spammy a little bit mm-hmm. and like no one wants to be around someone that's just constantly like listen to my beat listen to my music yes. you know like super annoying so you just got to be the guy that's there chilling, providing value. And I think that'll take you a long way. So I love what you said there about your secret sauce. So as we wrap up, where can people find you uh, online? Instagram, TikTok, okay. YouTube. Um, my handle is uh, Ivan from R-N-D. Okay. That's it. Ivan from R-N-D. Simple enough. Yes. Is there anything else? Uh, well, why don't, we, why don't we just finish with this? If you had to offer one piece of advice for somebody that's looking to get into the music industry, what would it be? Don't even try. Yeah. <laughs> no, you you, you will not make it. Yeah. It's not possible. For yeah. <laughs> Don't do it. You should quit. You should quit. Quit yeah. before you even get in. Yes. <laughs> Is that really what your advice would be? The, the, the reason why I say it like this, because like, uh, if you really want want to do it, like, don't listen to anyone. Just uh, do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If 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 it's really your passion, you will do it anyway. Somehow, yeah, you'll figure out some. Like if you're really passionate about something, no matter what, you have kids, family. Uh, I don't know the COVID, no money, nothing, yeah, no connections, no support. You will do it regardless. Regardless, yeah, no matter what. I agree. I was talking to my buddy the other day. I just went to lunch with an artist, and he. He took a break from music for a while and he, he had some initial success that was really good. But he's like, he's like, I just wanted to take a break. And I went, you know, I, I started to get into real estate and this kind of stuff. And he told me, he's like, I just couldn't stay away from music though. Like no matter how much I wanted to, mm-hmm. it just brought me back to it. And I just had to do it. Yes. So it's, it's almost like, I think, I think in order to do it, it almost has to be like a calling. Like you, like it's that much, like you have to do it. Like it's, it's something that you just can't live without. You know, mm-hmm. like that's how I feel. At least it has to be. Otherwise, it's it's just too hard. It's too hard to get in the industry if you're not just if you don't just go for it. Like you have to full exactly. on just go for it. I like. Uh, do you know Gary V? Yes. Yeah, okay. I love what he says. I, I think he's Russian or something. Yeah, he's Russian. He's from Soviet yep. Union. Like yeah, me. Yeah, I love Gary V. I love what he says about how he's like, put your head down and just eat dirt until you're like 35, and then look up at that point, and then just. If if you have to go back to school at that point, or you go go get a normal job, you can get a normal job. But just absolutely, just go for it because you only get one life. So it's like mm-hmm. that's that's my perspective. You get one life, you might as well just do it, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, man. Well, thank you for coming thank out, you. and thank you for it was super me. fun meeting you, obviously, and chatting, of course, about music. Like we could talk forever. Obviously, we've made records together, so we we we've worked on a on a music level before, mm-hmm. and I'm excited. We got to definitely make some more too. Uh, in the future I want to say uh, last thing yeah let's m- figure out and make somehow at least one million streams on Spotify there we go I like this it this is down. the goal okay yeah let's just document it here yeah let's do it <laughs> I'm there let's just make it yeah I one million streams on Spotify one million streams yes okay I think that's doable doable it's definitely doable 